Rob Dillingham is shifty. We all know that. But I'm sure you've been asking, how did he get like this? So today, we're gonna to talk about the movement qualities and ball handling principles it takes to be shifty. I posted a video the other day on TikTok talking about how to get shifty. One of the comments was saying that you can't really work out to be shifty. It's more of a play style. And I wanna dive deeper into that statement. First, let's see what Rob has to say himself. Last night we asked fans what questions they wanna ask you. And one of them was, how do you get so shifty? Is there is there <laughs> drills you work on? How, how does it how does it happen? When I was younger, I always used to like just start with dribbling drills, like always every drill, like a minute. So my arms would be burning like shit before like the workout would start. I just learned change of pace like by watching a lot of players like Kyrie, Allen Iverson, like how they change direction, change pace at a certain speed. So like chain pace is really like all it is to dribbling because like you don't really got to be able to dribble super crazy. You just got to have a ball like in your hands and be able to change paces and go different directions at a different pace like to where the defender is not going. So you can get shifty. You can work on it. I mean, you can definitely by dribbling, like just working on how hard you dribble and all of it, just like how it feels in your hands. Cause some people like when they're not comfortable, it just don't feel right. Yeah. But like for some people, like when you really know how to dribble, it's just like it comes to you way easy. So you heard what Rob had to say. Now here's my take. Now you couldn't possibly believe that he just came out the womb snatching folks ankles. Like, come on now. When he first started out, he was probably trash. Just like all the rest of us, dribbling off his foot, getting ripped, all that. He had to work on qualities such as ball control, manipulating the ball, protecting the ball, changing his pace, changing his levels, moving with the ball faster, changing direction, changing the speed. All these little things, little qualities that made him be able to do the moves that he can do now and play so freely. Now, the five topics we're gonna cover today is being able to shift your weight on the one leg and transition out of that phase, being able to stop on the dime, being able to change directions quickly, being able to change body positions from high to low, low to high. And the most important one is understanding how the defense moves. This is what determines what type of dribble moves you should actually do and how to set up your attack. So let's get into the qualities I think it actually takes to be shift. All right, the first one, being able to shift your mass onto one leg and transition out of that, that phase. So digging into one leg and getting out, it's gonna be more than just your leg. So it's gonna chain up from the bottom of your foot all the way up to the rest of your body, all the way up to your shoulder your neck, the whole body moves all together. The body is a tool. And if you use it together, great things can happen. Now, why is this important? It's important because we need to be able to control our weight eccentrically and redirect these forces in the opposite direction. Now, great ways to work on this movement is to work on it in the weight room, doing exercises such as these. With all these exercises, we're just working on shifting our body weights from one leg to the other very fast. And exercises such as this leads me directly into my next point, which is stopping on a dime. Take for example, Luca. Luca is not that fast, but he does know how to control his body weight very fast. Like he knows how to stop on a dime. That's how he gets all everybody with his moves. You have to be very strong in order to do this. So understand when you are sprinting, especially when you're going very fast, in order to stop the, the amount of force that you will put into the ground will be well over twice your body weight. Now, if you're not strong enough to handle these forces, you're probably gonna fall. So how do we work on being able to stop on a dime? First, we wanna build up our legs, make sure our legs are not so strong. If you can squat twice your body weight, you're in a good position to be able to do these type of moves. So basic exercises will help with this, like squats, single leg squats, lunge drops, anything like that. Now, being able to change pace and change directions quickly. This is, this is one of the big keys in order to be really shifty. You gotta understand the defender's momentum and your momentum. The way you can give somebody rhythm and take that rhythm away from them. It all comes down to pace because they're, they're reading your momentum and trying to stop you and trying to cut you off and get in front of you. you use that to your advantage. You give them an angle that you want them to, to take away so this whole other side becomes open. So now the defense doesn't really know when you're gonna go and where you're gonna go. Now they're at the disadvantage. They're playing catch up. This is how you can set up your defender to go wherever you wanna go. 
So changing our levels when we dribble is gonna help us protect the ball as we go past people. Because once we shift somebody, they still can get their arm out there and get, get a hand on the ball or in your way. Now you're gonna have to bust through that. You have to get through it just like a turnstile. Act like that arm is a turnstile and go right through it. You're gonna use your shoulder and your off arm to protect the ball and also use that their, their body as leverage to hold you up as you dip down. You probably thought I was gonna say a whole bunch of dribbling drills. Nah, those are important too, but that's not what we're really talking about today. We wanna understand how the defender moves in, in reaction to us. So there's always like a dance. When I move, they move. When they move, I move. I wanna be in control of the dance. I wanna set the tone. That's how you can set up these, these shifty moves. Once the defender has to react and overreacts to what I do. Now I'm in the advantage. Now you do need to have some ball control skills, but you need to be able to, you know, go between your legs, behind your back, spin move, all while running, you know, cross, all of these things. Those are all simple moves. We're not gonna really get into that today. I want you to understand how the defense moves. Because being shifty is more so about how the defender reacts, not so much you. This is a great play right here. To look at how, how he attacks his hips. He know that way he can't move his feet as fast as he can move his. See him stumbling. Most people have just kept going left-handed. But no, cross it right back. Make him open up his hips again. Look at his body position. Stop on a dime. Oh yeah. Now look how the defender is overreacting. He didn't do nothing crazy. He just snatched the ball. He didn't create, he didn't create that much separation. The separation came from the defender overreacting so much. That's how all that space became created. So right here, we just have a simple twin the legs float. But the key is he has the defender worrying about the screen. And this is the, this is one of the easiest ways to get a pull across over. Here. The defender is gonna be so occupied about looking at that screen. All you gotta do is wait for them to take that step or keep looking at it and just snatch it. Had that boy lost. Yeah, boy ain't know where to go. Right here, I want you to pay attention to how the defender reacts to this, that right foot, on this step. Mm. Sits him down. All his weight shifted backwards, which gave him that space to take off on that pull up. So boom, on this drive, pay attention to how he attacks that foot. He gets that foot to drop back. Now, this top foot is open to be attacked. Because all his weight is on that left foot. Now, if you attack that left foot right now, he has to put his other foot down in order to move that other foot. And it opens up just like a door. It's what I try to teach all my kids. Make the hip, that foot, drop back and open up like a door. I really like his pace on this play. Watch how he just loves him to sleep. Takes his time, then explodes out of it. Love him sleep. Explode. Yeah. Watch his off arm. It really should be his off sh his shoulder. He goes through that arm, that contact with his shoulder. <laughs> knocks that shit out the way. Look at the ball placement on this layup, man. That's tough. That's next level. Skip has he. The skip allows him time to read whatever's going on uh, in the action. This is giving him time to read to make his next move. That time to read gives you, gives you time to look at your, your, your next defender 
decide how he's reacting to what you're doing and base your decision off of that. Now, once you start becoming smarter, you already know what's going on. Like if I come off a screen and it's a big that I know, he can't really move his feet like that. Guess what? Chop City. I'm finna make him do the chop chop slide. See, so Skip has he just freezes his fender and explodes. He's changing his pace. It's a great layup right there too. Let's watch how he changes changes his directions. Changes level. Boom. Sitting up high. Change low. Gets that defender to drop his foot all the way back. But it still ain't all the way there. Hits him with another spin move. Because the defender overreacted. Let's see how he recovered. And tried to cut off his left hand drive. Which is fine. It leaves open his right hand. And that's a tough layup right there. Okay, you top, tack that top foot. Boom, bust through that arm. You're gonna bust through that arm like a turnstile. Open up the door. Now look how he plants that foot, that outside foot, the defense, or inside foot. Look how he plants that inside foot. Plant this right foot, that left foot like that, dead meat. Immediate step back. Ain't nothing he could do about that. I really like this one. Just watch how this float shifts the defender. And this is a really good defender. That's all you really need. You just need this right here. Get them to shuffle their feet and then attack. And then read how they respond to how you just attack. That is where the reaction, the reaction timing comes into play. Yes. Notice how he cuts off his angle to jump. He chops his legs off so he can't really get a running start to take off and try to block his shot. All guards, you need to learn how to do this. Gets it up high off the glass. Because if he, go, he goes and block this off the glass like that, he deserves it. Straight up. One of the most basic principles of being shifty when you really simplify the game is what are you selling? So one of the main things that makes Rob shifty is you do not know what he's about to do. He could pull up at any time. He could pull up going both ways. He can do a floater going both ways, layup going both ways. He's, he's truly unpredictable. So if you're ready to become unguardable like Rob, check out my Rob Dillingham workout for the shifty guards.